Quick one. <laughs> so December was a special month. I found out that I passed my fourth and final CPA exam. Plan on getting this all done in about nine months and I ended up taking about 15. Just going from full-time work to straight into the room to study, be isolated and come back out to break to eat, put Derek down to bed and go straight back to studying clear till 9, 10 at night. I mind sore the whole time. I couldn't have done it without Ashley's support. She was just my rock. Um, she just was completely supportive. Um, really the only stipulation was that um, we couldn't miss church. That was the most important to her. Roger CPA review was highly recommended to me by uh, my coworker Cole. A huge shout out to Roger Phillip. He's probably the funniest instructor I've ever had the pleasure of sitting there and watching on a recorded video for 100 plus hours. He brings comedy to his material that really breaks up the monotony of just sitting there by yourself with a computer, headphones, and him staring at you the whole time. I highly recommend his course material, his books, his support staff, his admins answering any questions you might have, um, and his exam simulators. They were almost to a T, the, the exam, it was great. As far as my journey goes, I started, was just kind of one of my goals that my manager, Mariko, recommended. I asked her, what, what do you think I should do next? And she was like, well, you should probably get your CPA. Going into an accounting field, being not progressing to a CPA level, it kind of puts a, a ceiling on you. Um, so it's something I always knew I had to do. Um, I got my books in August of 2017 and started studying. I was pretty excited. I studied about four hours a day for, um, depending on the exam, two to four times a week. I was told FAR was the beast, so I decided to start with that one. While my spirits were still high, I was still excited. Um, I tried to stick to a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday schedule, where Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday were just right after work. Ragged out at about three days, and then the BC, I tried to just pound it out as fast as I could, so I did about four days a week. Right after work, I'd get home, start studying about six o'clock, break for dinner about half hour to an hour in. As soon as I was done, I'd go back and study. About eight o'clock came around, I would help put Derek down to bed, say goodnight, get back to studying till about nine, ten o'clock. During month end times, I wasn't able to study, so I kind of plan my schedule accordingly on that. The study planners that Roger provides, they're amazing. They're just really an Excel spreadsheet and you can move it around and tailor it to your schedule. I try to take as little break time as possible in between the days or pound out a good section, not really piecemeal it every day. Every study planner recommendation I found said to do it from hardest to the perceived easiest. Um, get the bulk of the material out of the way sooner than later. Being in corporate accounting FAR is also the closest to my skill set, so I felt like I'd have the most information going into that one and be able to relate to it. I took the FAR exam back in November of 2017. Um, it, at that time, I didn't know that you didn't get the score released at once you finished the exam. It was really aggravating to wait. Um, luckily, taking it in November, I was able to get my score back in December, so the first one came back pretty quick. Well, the score released the following month and I got a 79. I took about a two week break in between the exam date and studying for the next section. That was based on the recommendation of the planner and it seemed like it gave enough time. So I moved on to the reg exam next. Studying for this exam felt kind of different because tax law there's not really a rhyme or reason that makes sense to the world. It's just that's the way the tax was law was set up. and. So you just have to run with that. I took the reg exam back in February this year. Um, this was the only exam I walked out of without a gut-wrenching feeling. I later learned that that was a bad thing. Um, if you walk out of the exam not ready to throw up, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, I, I skimped the fail mark. I got a 69, um, where 75 is passing. Roger, of course, recommended that I just didn't study enough. I had all of it in front of me. and. When it came down to the end practice exams, I just did one instead of the two or three that I did on the FAR. 
Um, so I kind of learned my lesson on that. And I never did the cram courses, mainly because I was bootstrapping it with my own funds and I didn't want to take that additional money to do them. Um, I can see how the cram courses could be really beneficial because there is a lot of material and um, it just kind of narrows in a little bit more, I think. When I found out I failed the first right exam, I was about a month or so into the audit material. Um, it was recommended I just completely drop that and go straight back into studying the reg um, to recall it faster. So I applied online, got a new application for that testing section and just went to town on it. This is kind of where my world belt fell apart. I just paid for my reg exam and that I later found out that the reciprocity rules changed on the education requirement. I was recommended to go through the California registration because um, Rico had certified through California and she didn't need to get her graduate degree or the extra 30 credit hours that's required in Utah. Back in 2015, they decided to make it a more reciprocal nationwide certification. In doing so, they needed to raise the bar in every other state to the 150 education um, semester credit hours. Somehow I never came across this reciprocity change, even though this is two years later. Um, but California actually lets you sit for the exams just having the bachelor's degree. So it just never came up in conversation, I guess. I went through California initially thinking I would get the certification, not really having any plans to move to California, but that I could at least get the exams sat for and over with and then go back to school later. My heart kind of sank at that point because I thought um, the investment I put towards the CPA materials and passing that FAR exam would just kind of be in vain. So I just picked it up. I, I didn't really stop studying. I wanted to um, remain positive and just had it in my mind that there was probably a way that this works out. There's no way that every CPA takes the education piece and the 18 month window. So I just kept going with the studying, planning on taking the reg exam because I already paid for it, might as well. I decided to call the California Board of Accountancy to see what my options were. I, I hope I never forget this, but um, the person I ended up talking to, he told me people have been trying to get their education requirements since the Clinton administration. Um, but they, the important thing was that they passed all four of their exams in the 18 month period of each other and they were able to just kind of get those set in stone. Once you, I found out once you pass all four of them, they never expire. Having that good news, I just picked up um, where I was left off on the quizzes for the second attempt at the reg. Um, I had to wait for the registration to come back on the exam, so it took about a month, month and a half um, delay in that point, but I was able to study appropriately and sufficiently. I got an 82. Some people would say I got seven points too much worth of studying, but it was um, worked out great in the end. I restarted my audit material um, right after I took the reg exam. felt like audit was the easiest, more so because it, it does have a rhyme or and a reason. If you have in mind that just the, the best practice or um, the, the clear right from wrong is the best answer, then um, me personally, I walked out with an 83. So at this point, I've passed my FAR, I've passed my REG, and I've passed my audit exams um, just down to the BEC. I'm pretty worn out. This has gone on about a year now, but it's my final exam. I just got to trudge through it. Some people think it's the easiest, and they walk out with a failing score. It's not to be taken lightly. They they make the BEC exam just as hard as the other ones. Don't take it lightly. The BEC exam was by far the most chaotic for me. In comparison, the why people think it's so much easier is the FAR, the green book on the top, um, is about twice the size of the purple, the BEC at the bottom. The hard part about the material is that it is everything that doesn't fit in FAR, reg, or audit. So it's just a gambit of just complete randomness where each, each section is useful but it doesn't tie to the next section, it doesn't compound on the others. I studied for about a month and a half and um, took the test in the early part of October. 
I don't know why, but I decided to take a midday exam rather than the 8 o'clock at the Prometric Centers like the rest of them have been. I highly recommend against this. Um, being lunchtime, I got hungry. I had to um, sit there with everybody else that was hungry and it just seemed louder. It was harder to focus. But by some miracle, I, I passed with a, a 79. Um, I really thought I was going to fail. The time frame taking in October, the release was December, the beginning of December, waiting for that final one. I couldn't study another exam because I didn't have one left. I tried to stay positive at the end of it, just, no, nope, I passed, I'm, I'm ready, it, it's, it's done, I don't have to do it anymore. It was really daunting to just sit there and wait. I was sitting there eating breakfast the day that the exam scores were released. I pulled it up on my phone and um, Ashley and Derek were sitting there and, and I just kind of froze looking at my phone just so excited that I passed I got a 79 and I was yelling for a minute just in pure excitement and I kind of scared Derek half to death again I know I won't be certified but I have the exams done um, if I can pass the exams I can go back and get my Mac I'd say for a few bits of advice for the, the me 15 months ago get it under a year over a year is just insane. Life happens. Um, fortunately, nothing really happened to me that would deter me away, but Ashley needed a lot of help being pregnant and having Derek running around. So stay positive during the exams. Doubting yourself the whole time isn't going to do you any good. It's okay to doubt, but if you walk in knowing you're going to fail, chances are you're going to. Don't take any of them lightly. I took hundreds of the IPQs in the Roger CPA review practice exams. They even now have a mobile app that I kind of missed the boat on. They published that right when I was done. Um, but they do have the Smart Path, which is gives you a recommended amount of questions you take and and get correct for each of the sections um, based on other people submitting their scores and how much they practiced in their own course material. Take morning exams if you can. Um, I felt like I was able to get a good breakfast, get in, get it over with, and come home and just relax rather than doing it midday. The energy was different and the room wasn't chaotic in the mornings. And finally, make sure you celebrate. The CPA exams are less than a 50% pass rate. They maintain that high level of um, difficulty to make sure that the people becoming CPAs know what they're doing. Celebrate it. It's definitely worth it. Um, I myself am going to take this bag of books and I'm going to go down to Gunnison tomorrow and blow them up with some Tannerite and a shotgun. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> book zero. No more book. Oh yeah!